<clears throat> oh, Canada, our home and native land. That's all I got. Sorry. <laughs> Welcome back to Canada Week here on Tom's Hit Parade, my week-long tribute to my favorite music from the Great White North, the nation of Canada. I thought I'd keep things relatively simple with today's video and drop you guys a list. Uh, in honor of the 13 provinces and territories of the nation of Canada, I'm going to give you my list of my 13 favorite Canadian artists of all time, along with five honorable mentions. And uh, let's just go ahead and drop down the honorable mentions first. Uh, first of all is an artist that I've, I'm relatively new to, but I've liked her so much with her first album that I picked up uh, her second and third as well, Chantal Kreviasuk. She is a singer-songwriter, kind of in the vein of Sarah McLaughlin, who, not coincidentally, I had discovered uh, through my sister's music collection pretty soon uh, before I found uh, Chantal Kreviasuk. So yeah, good artist. Uh, check her out if you haven't yet. And then another one. These guys would probably be in my top ten, probably. Um, if uh, I had any album beyond this. I actually have never listened to one of their full studio albums, but I, I really like the, this introduction to them. It's a power pop rock band called Sloan, and uh, they have just some insanely catchy songs, and this actually, this singles collection is, as I said, the only album I have of theirs. Uh, I'm going up to Portland later this week, and I plan on scoping out, uh, seeing how many of their studio albums I can find. But yeah, just if you love just that catchy power pop semi-garage-ish rock, garage rock kind of stuff, check out Sloan. You've got to. And then we have a, uh, a jazz singer, Nikki Yanofsky. Uh, she's put out two albums, I believe, maybe more. I only have her first two albums. But yeah, she's got, she's got a great jazzy voice, uh, fantastic. Uh, but yeah, I mean, not much else I can say about her. But yeah, it's just very, very fun, fun to listen to. Great to get, uh, check her out if you haven't yet. And then uh, another one. I hesitated whether or not, I mean, you know, this is getting up to the actual list of 13, so I, I was going to put him in my list of 13, but, well, there are other artists that I just kind of like a little bit more. Uh, but this one, uh, he is actually was one of the winners of Canadian Idol. Yes, there is a, and I've actually thought about doing a video about this uh, uh, at some point on my channel, and I'm sure I will at some point, is uh, I, for a while there, I was collecting... Uh, the winners and uh, finalists from idol, idol competitions from around the world, as you know, or as you maybe you don't know, uh, the original British version Pop Idol, which uh, which begat American Idol, uh, that was actually also licensed to many other nations and territories around the world, Canada being one of them. So yeah, it's not just a Canadian singing competition; it is the Canadian version of Idol. Uh, that's why it carries the Idol name, obviously. But uh, yeah, he is. Probably my favorite international idol of them all is a Canadian idol by the name of Kalen Porter. Uh, he won, what did he win, the season two, I think? I have notes, but I don't have them in front of me. <laughs> Good thinking. Uh, but yeah, he was just fantastic. And you see a skinny white kid here, uh, but don't let that give you any preconceptions about his voice. He has one of the beefiest and uh, greatest baritone singing voices I have ever heard. I mean, he is honestly, for some reason, I'm not quite sure. I can't pin it down as to why, but he is one of my favorite singing voices ever. Just, you know, I mean, yeah, just call him up on Spotify. He's pro His music is probably on Spotify or, or another streaming service out there, other streaming services. But yeah, check his stuff out. He's just great. He's just got a great voice. And I've actually got both of his albums. I think I actually like Wake Up Living, his sophomore album, a little bit better. And uh, the song Hooray, which was a single of his, is probably one of the best music videos I have ever seen in my life. It's just funny. It's uh, The scenario of the video is him and his grandmother in a uh, heated game of Scrabble at the uh, the family family room table. It's, it, it's a, just a great funny video, a great concept for the video, and really, really cleverly done. So go go on YouTube and seek out Kalen Porter Hooray, H-U-R-R-A-Y. I'm almost having second thoughts. That's just, just having him as a runner-up, honestly. But yeah, he is one of my runners-up four favorite Canadian artists of all time. And rounding out the runners, or the, uh, excuse me, not runners up, honorable mentions, uh, rounding out the honor honorable mentions is a pop duo called Wave. 
in a way they were Canada's answer to Savage Garden, the Australian pop duo, although Savage Garden was heavily, uh, more heavily on the synths and uh, Wave is more on the organic stuff, you know, uh, piano and guitar and that kind of thing. So, so yeah, I've got uh, both of their albums. Uh, they're just great, great ho hooky songs through both of their albums. Just a, a wonderful pop duo called Wave from Canada. Okay, now let's get on into the top 13 favorite artists. Starting the list at number 13, at the bottom of the list, but by no means the worst artist, is Sarah McLaughlin. Yeah, I discovered her, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, I discovered her through my sister's music collection. I had erroneously dismissed her as one of the Celine Dionish, uh, snoozy, pop diva kind of uh, uh, artists, but she is actually has a decent amount of rock and pop, uh, you know, mainstream pop and rock uh, kind of uh, stylings in her songs. Very, very good songwriting and singing. Uh, yeah, she's a classic uh, Canadian singer-songwriter. In uh, yeah, she's got a reputation for a very, very good reason. So yeah, Sarah McLaughlin. And number twelve is a relative newcomer to the Canadian uh, music landscape. It is a the reggae pop rock group called Magic. Uh, yes, they put out three albums so far. I've got all three of them. Uh, some of you might cringe a bit at this choice, but uh, honestly, and they were dismissed at least in america i think as a one-hit wonder for their song rude and honestly that was the least impressive song on this album honestly i don't know if this is the best album or not but uh, yeah it's uh, all three of their albums are worth checking out uh, yeah they're just a fantastic group their last album came out last year it's called expectations just a, a great group all around uh, magic is uh, my number 12 choice Number 11 is a guy that I've talked about before. He, his uh, debut self-titled album was uh, a Spotlight Review album in one of my Bargain Bag videos recently, and that is Tal Backman. He is the son of Randy Backman from Backman Turner Overdrive. Uh, yeah, he's put out, I think, only two albums. This is his sophomore album, uh, Staring Down the Sun. Uh, but yeah, he's just, you know, what can I say? I, I just love the guy. He's just got great, great music. Uh, very, very fun to listen to. I just, you know, it's like, you know, with some of these, I'm just not sure how much I can say about them, just that I love them, what can I say? And now heading into the top ten is uh, one of the stalwarts of Canada's music scene. Uh, she started out in kind of the country vein, but she's uh, gradually transitioned into the folk and pop realms. I could be wrong about this, but supposedly she lives, or at least she, she at the very least, uh, frequents a couple of the music stores up in Portland. So, you know, I who knows, I might actually run into her face-to-face -face one of these days. But anyway, uh, let's finally name this artist that I've been talking about. It is Katie Lang. She is, yes, one of the shining stars of Canada's music landscape. See, I have, what, seven or eight of her CDs, and most of those I inherited from my sister, uh, her, her music collection. Uh, yeah, so easy to develop a, a real liking for, honestly. So yeah, Katie Lang, uh, wonderful, wonderful artist, number 10 uh, in my list of favorite Canadian artists of all time. Uh, number nine is another relative newcomer, and uh, this choice again, it might raise a couple of eyebrows, uh, make some of you squint your eyes at me strangely or something, but uh, hey, Sean Mendez, uh, I've got a soft spot for him, what can I say? Uh, partly he's uh, in my top ten because I have every one of his albums, including his Unplugged album on CD, and it's just, he seems to me to be getting better and better with each album. And I think he, he still has yet to show us his best stuff. I mean, I think he's going to be one of these artists that when he's in his, uh, when he approaches his 30s, he's going to be, you know, right up there with, uh, you know, some of the best artists around anywhere, Canada or otherwise. Uh, but yeah, he's just, he's great. He's, he's genuinely talented. Uh, he can easily be dismissed because of his fame as a teen pop uh, artist. But uh, hey, he's... I think he's overlooked, honestly. So yeah, Sean Mendez, number nine on my favorite list uh, of Canadian artists. Number eight is uh, another one of the longer standing artists uh, from Canada who has uh, infiltrated the U.S. in a fairly big way, actually. She is a jazz artist, and again, this is one of the artists who I uh, inherited most of the uh, discography that I have of hers, which I think is actually complete. I think I have all of her albums uh, from my sister, and it is Diana Krall. Yes, she is. Uh, one of her claims to fame is she's actually married to Elvis Costello. So uh, you know, that's neither here nor there, and Elvis Costello isn't Canadian, but I just thought I'd mention it. But uh, yeah, she is, just has a gorgeous, gorgeous, beautiful, kind of a smoky, sultry voice, uh, and is an absolute standout uh, for music in general. I mean, even if, you know, beyond the jazz field, she's just fan a fantastic artist. 
uh, seems to get better with every album. I look at her as one of the gifts from my sister that uh, I have developed such a taste, such a, a liking for Diana Krall's sound. Uh, number seven is one of the, uh, well, one of the older artists, uh, not a really old artist, but uh, yeah, he came to prominence in the 80s. And he is very much a rock artist, one of the, uh, again, one of the biggest Canadian stars to emerge in the U.S. and gain popularity, Brian Adams. Yeah, I mean, what can you say about this guy? I mean, he's if you grew up in the 80s, you were listening to Brian Adams, he was on your playlist. Uh, well, not that there were playlists in the 80s, but uh, you know what I mean. He was on the radio, all over the radio in the States. And for very good reason, a whole bunch of great songs came out of this guy. Uh, this is his album, it cuts like a knife, but uh, there's another album that is one of my bigger favorites of his. But yeah, um, an artist very worthy of attention if you have not paid any, much attention to him yet. Brian Adams, fantastic artist. Now number six on my list is probably going to be a bit of a surprise. Uh, this artist uh, has been gone for a long time. Uh, they've stopped recording back in the early 90s, I think, with uh, one out. Their last album uh, is actually on my list of favorite albums from Canada. But yeah, this artist uh, is just one of my favorites because I have all of their, I think I have all of their albums. Uh, and I keep going back to them regularly. It's just uh, one of my not-so-guilty pleasures. Uh, but yeah, as I said, this is going to be a uh, raise a bit of an eyebrow because uh, they're such a low-profile artist, uh, especially nowadays. I doubt very many of you in or outside of Canada have heard of them. They are, are they are or were a pop duo called One to One. And this, this was their sophomore album, I think, uh, self-titled. And yeah, I... What can I say about them? It's a very much pop, very very 80s. This one was put out in the 80s, I think. Yeah, 1988. Uh, so yeah, a whole lot of synths on this album, at least. Uh, Louise Rennie was the uh, vocalist, and Leslie Howe was the guitarist. You can see him in the background there. But yeah, just, uh, just a fantastic duo. Uh, what can I say about them? I just ins insanely catchy songs, especially on the album I will be talking about in my favorite albums list. Uh, but... Yeah, they, they probably shouldn't be so high on my list, but, you know, it's just it's just my thing. I just keep coming back to them, as I said. But, yeah, one, two, one. They only put out, I think, three albums, and uh, two of them are relatively hard to come by. Only one of them gained, gained marginal popularity in the States, as I said. So they in the States, they're kind of a one-hit wonder. So, uh, but, yeah, I will be going into them more, in more detail uh, in my favorite albums video. But, yeah, one, two, one is my number six favorite artist from Canada of all time. Go figure, right? Number five, I wasn't sure I wanted to put this artist so high because he is, in fact, Canadian-American. So he's not, you know, he's not full-blooded Canadian. Those of you who might be Canada purists out there might balk or, or uh, scoff at this choice. But, uh, well, hey, I'm the one making the list, so bleh. But anyway, <laughs> number five on my list is Rufus Wainwright. Uh, yes, he's, uh, I've probably talked about him a few times on my channel. Just he's one of my favorite art artists of all time. And it's atypical for the stuff that I like, because it's it's kind of Baroque pop, chamber pop kind of stuff is mostly what he does. So it's kind of off the beaten path. It takes an acquired taste. It's not really mainstream. So uh, it's in a way, it's kind of a surprise that I like his stuff as much as I do. But yeah, he's just... Uh, I've got all but one of his albums. I am missing one of his albums. Uh, it's probably high time I ought to go and get it, because I see it every once in a while at the stores. I just never bother to spend the money on it. But anyway... Wonderful artist, uh, quirky and very unique artist, uh, not for everyone, as I said, but uh, yeah, he's number five on my all-time Canada favorites list, so there you go. And now forging onward through the top five, uh, my number four favorite Canadian artist of all time is another classic Canadian artist, I guess you'd say. She's been around for quite a while. I, I define classic loosely as uh, an artist who's been around for at least 20 years, and she has been. Uh, she's made her breakthrough in the early 90s, I believe it was, uh, and I have her first five or six albums, uh, not counting the first, her first one or two albums were Canadian-only releases, and they were very different from her output after that, and those releases didn't really extend beyond the Canadian border. But yes, yeah, since that uh, American Breakthrough album in the early 90s, I've, uh, I've really enjoyed her, and uh, well, what can I say? Let me give, let me tell you her name so that you're not guessing anymore, although you've probably figured it out, Alanis Morissette. Yes, yeah, she's, uh, what can I say about her? She's a popular artist here in America for good reason. Uh, very tuneful songs, memorable hooks, uh, well-written lyrics. She's gotten a little heat from uh, time to time with her uh, lyrics being kind of weirdly phrased in certain uh, albums. But overall, I really enjoy her. She's That's why she's in my top five, uh, honestly. 
I could name a list of 20, 25 of her really good songs that uh, I love coming back to regularly. But yes, Alanis Morissette uh, is my number four favorite Canadian artist of all time. And now my number three favorite Canadian artist of all time. And it honestly kind of surprised me that I ranked him so high. Uh, I basically used a, a rough formula of the amount of the artist albums that I have and as the frequency with which I listen to them. And of course, you know, the frequency with which their songs stay in my mind. Just kind of a, a, a vague formula like that to determine their placement on my list. But uh, yeah, number three uh, really ranked highly in all those categories. I have to say, even though I don't really, I don't come back to that particular subgenre of pop music as much as you know regular rock and pop, just because I'm mainly just trying to keep up with current uh, releases and stuff. But yes, he is a currently active artist. He's been around for since 1998, so 20 some years, and that is Michael Bublé. Uh, I mean, what can you say about his voice? He has one of the finest voices. Uh, currently singing today uh, just that uh, just a bright resonance to his voice and he's just the the pitch in his voice is just so nimble and and spot on so darn often he's just so very very appealing to listen to and you know when i'm in the mood for that stuff which as i said is not always is not as often as i would like it's just he is one of my go-to artists for that uh, kind of easy listening ish pop uh light pop kind of stuff you really can't go wrong with Michael Bublé. He's just great. And also, he's, you know, whenever I see him in interviews and stuff, he's just a, seems like a genuinely likable guy otherwise, you know. So, yeah, music and personality-wise, he's just, you know, fantastic. Michael Bublé, I've got every one of his albums, I think, including his Christmas album. Does he have more than one Christmas album? I'm not sure. If he does, then, I, then no, I don't have all of his Christmas albums. I've got one. But, uh, yeah, he's just, you know. As I said, you can't go wrong with Michael Bublé, my number three favorite Canadian artist of all time. Now, number two is probably going to surprise you uh, in the same way that, uh, what was it, my number six did, in that uh, a lot of you probably have never heard of these guys. Uh, it's because they have not been active since around the year 2000, uh, much to my disappointment because their last album was fantastic. And yes, you will be seeing it in my favorite albums countdown. But yeah, these guys, uh, an interesting story behind them. The Moffats. Uh, this this was actually their most popular album in the States. Uh, they've had some minor hits with, you know, amongst the teenage set. Yes, they were pretty much teen pop. They actually started out as a kitty country artist. You know, in, when they were, I think, before their teenage years, they made two country albums, which were primarily Canadian-only releases. I think they were not available in the States. Uh, you know, you'd, ha you'd have to get them as imports from Canada. And I've got one of those. I don't have the other one, but uh, that's I intend to get it uh, at some point just for completest sake to have their full discography. But uh, yeah, this produced a couple of minor hits on American pop radio, and they were kind of lumped in with the boy band sound of the late 90s, which in my opinion was a little unfair because these guys play their own instruments, they wrote their own songs, and uh, it is uh, Scott Moffat, who is uh, the guy in the front here, he is the older brother of the other three guys who were triplets, uh, two for two identical twins and one fraternal triplet. All three of them born the same day. Uh, and, and Scott Moffin has actually gone on to be a producer now. Um, he's uh, one of his most recent uh, prominent artists, I guess you'd say, is he's worked with Luke Combs, country, country artist. So I guess in that respect, he's kind of come full circle back to his the country roots that he started with. So, uh, But yeah, these guys just put out some of the darn hookiest pop music you've ever heard in your life. Uh, this was their next to last album. This is a f very fine album, a wonderful, you know, if you just want that plain old ear candy, check out the Moffats. Uh, they're just wonderful, wonderful to listen to. And yet my runner up for favorite Canadian artist of all time, even though their output uh, was uh, on a, to a smaller uh, cumulative scale than a lot of the other artists in this countdown. And now my number one favorite Canadian artist of all time if you've been watching my channel from the beginning, you might be able to uh, deduce this. I'm not sure exactly how much I talked about these guys, but I, as much as I like them, I probably should have been talking about them quite a lot. But anyway, my number one favorite artist of all time, they're actually still active. They've been active for a little over 20 years. Uh, what's this? Uh, 1992, so actually uh, almost 30 years, so a little over 25 years. They are Bare Naked Ladies. What can I say? I, I love these guys. I heard If I Had a Million Dollars, which is off of their debut album, Gordon, on a uh, American talk show 
back in the day when the album was released and it was just so catchy and quirky and tongue-in-cheek funny as most of these guys output especially in their earlier years was and I, that's probably what attracted me to them was just they were just so darn quirky and probably one of the quintessentially Canadian bands uh, Canadian viewers out there correct me if I'm wrong if that's if the Bare Naked Ladies early stuff was not uh, a quintessential Canadian sense of humor but uh, yeah that's one reason I like them and for some reason well the other reason I like them was just they were gen genuinely great songwriters uh, they injected as I said a lot of humor into their songs at first but then very uh, steadily and slowly they were writing about very serious stuff and the songs are have been always been catchy uh, I've actually f to tr confess the truth I've actually fallen off on listening to their stuff in recent years there are a few of their albums that uh, I really cooled off on and and actually actually ended up getting rid of but uh, yeah their first five albums I think and then their most recent few um, I, I've really enjoyed I've got my collection you know there's that gap in the the more recent half of their discography I've got a little gap in this just was stuff that just kind of lost its appeal to me for whatever reason but uh, yeah they're particularly their earliest earliest half dozen albums I just absolutely positively love I come back to them regularly they're um, among my greatest hits of my uh, uh, post-teenage years but yeah before I keep going on and on and on let me just say bare naked ladies for good reason are my favorite Canadian artist of all time so yes there you have it for better or worse my list of my favorite Canadian artists of all time notice I don't call it the best Canadian artists of all time because well some of the weird placements on this list I mean I will admit they're they're strange but that's why I don't call this list the best I call it my favorite Canadian artist of all time and yeah, this, it just goes to show, at least in my opinion, what a great, fantastic body of work uh, Canadian musicians have come up with, uh, some of which has filtered down here to the United States of America. Uh, and in my opinion, our listening is all the better for it. So uh, I will be showing you, uh, by the way, later on this week, my favorite Canadian albums of all time. And yes, you will hear uh, some uh, repeat uh, artists from uh, this countdown you will hear their names in my favorite albums countdown later on this week so please stick around with that uh, i hope you've been enjoying canada week as much as i have been it's just wonderful it's i've been wanting to do this love letter to canadian music for a long time now but anyway that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed it suggestions questions constructive criticisms lay them on me in the comment section below also scroll down to the description for the link to my twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow youtubers who are all worth checking out and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.